Okay. Although Roma are the largest ethnic minority in Europe, they still experience high level of racism and have to deal with many societal issues. Additionally, Roma are being represented in a very stereotypical way in the media and, and art world. The Roma theater has more than a century long past with active professional theater groups in many European countries, but unfortunately they are hardly known. The Roma Heroes Theatre Festival, initiated by the Independent Theatre Hungary, is the only international Roma theatre encounter in the world, which have been organized in every year since 2017. Some of the present artists and their work are introduced in our series. And today my guest is Michael Collins, the performer and author of the play called Is it a cultural thing or or is it? Uh, hi, Michael, how are yes. you? Hello, how are you keeping? <laughs> good, good. Um, so my first yeah, question... Yeah, it's, it's, it. yeah. Uh, sorry, what was the first question? Yeah, I didn't say it. I thought you want to say something first, but then, okay. So my first... No, 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 no it's all right. Okay, <laughs> my first question yeah. would be, could you please summarize very briefly what the play is about, uh, what inspired you when you were uh, writing it, and also how is it to, to perform it for you? Yeah, well, um, I was born in the mid 60s. And before that, travelers were a nomadic people and used to travel around the countryside. They were tinsmiths, uh, horse dealers, and uh, seasonal workers. And then in the mid 60s, um, the social welfare came in, the tinware died out and people start buying cars and getting rid of the horses and wagons and buying trailers and moving to Dublin. And then the social welfare came in. And in order to get the social welfare, you had to have a permanent address. And in order to have a permanent address, they forced all the travellers to move into uh, big towns and cities. Uh, the play is actually about the history of travellers from the 1960s up to date through the eyes of a child. So I start off as an adult character and then I go into the child character telling the story to my youngest son. Sounds interesting. Do you have a favourite part or a very challenging part of, uh, of the play? There's, there's a couple of um, uh, very strong um, scenes in it. One is um, trying to get into school. Um, there was a, a big boy school and a girl school. And because they had their quota of travelers, they wouldn't allow us into the boy school. So we had to go to the girl school. But when I say it was a girl school, you had the national girl school. And then on, on the back of that school, there was a wooden hut for travellers only. So you had maybe 40 odd travellers, young boys and girls, all different ages, and the majority of them came out not being able to read or write. So that was that, that was one of the first stories I remember as a child. And then there was other stories around um, the discrimination when it came to uh, trying to say play sports with the, the, the local settled people, if you won a trophy you, and they had it in a hall or in a pub upstairs, they wouldn't allow the travellers in. They would give the travellers their trophies outside of the door. So there's a very strong scene um, like, you want me to take your trophies outside, outside, not being allowed into the boys' school, outside, you dirty gypsy knacker bastards, outside. My poor mother has to drink a cup of tea outside in the rain. And now you, sir, want me to take trophies outside. Mm. And then it just goes silence, then the light goes down. So there, there, there are scenes like that in it, but it tells the story of the child growing up until the child gets, becomes aware of who he is and becomes politi politicized about who he is and about the traveler community and try and challenge uh, the institutions and people's attitudes towards him and his family and his extended family. 
you mentioned discrimination. I would I would be really interested how is the situation for Roma travelers, gypsies, Sinti, or uh, the Roma community and people in the, there. Like, what are the societal issues they are facing, or is there something that you know? Like, a, do you see a development uh, in these regards? Mm -hmm. There are more um, travellers involved now in in standing up. There's more activists out there to stand up for travellers' rights and travellers' issues. There's more travel women involved in, in women's issues and travel women's issues. But the basic uh, discrimination and racism still happens on a daily basis. It's like uh, walking through a shop, you would be followed, um, trying to get a traveller uh, appropriate accommodation, education, uh, employment. Like There's an awful lot of young men and women who be maybe some of them would be employed uh, in the building trade or in shopping centers and they could not say that they were members of the traveling community because if they did they, they would lose their job they'd be afraid to actually um, say who they are so to keep all that inside them and of course that is not very good for any young people because one of our biggest problems now in, in, in our society is the suicide rate uh, in the traveling community. Even though we, we're in around 35, 4,000 uh, in a whole, like which is less than less than 1% of the population, the suicide rate is seven times higher in the traveling community than it is in the settled community. So even though you can't pinpoint the reasons why people um, commit suicide or die by suicide, uh, the, the discrimination would be clearly one of those reasons uh, in our society. So on a daily basis, it's still out there, very much so, but it's done a lot different than it used to be years ago. Years ago, they were very upfront and very blatant. They would say, we don't serve your kind here. Uh, no travelers allowed, but these days it's, it's no regulars, you know, you're not a regular. So they kind of use different language, but it's still quite prominent out in the community. And an example would be just less than maybe three weeks ago, there was a traveler home, a house allocated for a traveler family. Mm -hmm. And the county council spent over 250,000 buying this house and doing it up. And when the local residents found out that it was for a tra the traveling family, they burnt it to the ground. So that's what travelers have to face on a daily basis. Mm, it's horrible. Um, just yeah, going coming back a bit to to art and the creation of art. I would ask you, what do you yes. think about yes? Because you know these are very hard topics, and of course it's happening unfortunately everywhere in, with Roma and discrimination. And yes. Racism. Yes. But yes. let's yeah, let's come back to to art and the creation of art. Um, yeah. What yeah. do you think about the representation of Roma in 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 art? And also, well, the team, yeah, go for it. Yeah, 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 it would, um, see, the, the thing, even though I, I'm, I'm kind of explaining this uh, play that I wrote, a uh, cultural thing, it's actually one of the first plays of many. I've wrote about five or six. Uh, some of them are one man shows, some of them are two handers. And uh, even though I'm explaining it because of the questions you're asking me, it's actually a very, very funny show. It's, it's full of humor, it's full of drama. It's full of music, and it's also um, there's also issues in it that people would say, ah, oh, yeah. Even though the child is being funny on the stage, the Irish he kind of wakes up and go, oh, maybe I shouldn't be laughing at that. So it is a very in entertaining piece of work, and and people who will look at it will will see that for what it is. And I suppose it's to me, the arts is a great platform. Let it be true, uh, drama, comedy music, poetry, way of expression. You can do it in a way where you're not really um, baiting people over the head with the issues about travellers and the way travellers get treated or the way that Roman gypsies out through Europe get treated. You're doing it in a way that it's just comedy in it, just singing in it, just entertainment in it, but there's also a very strong message. So the platform is, is one of the most expressive ways. And I, 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 I've been doing it for the last 30 years. So I, it, it's a very strong platform. 
I would also ask you what what is your art creed? What are the principles that you follow when you are creating art or when you are performing? Well, um, one of the things that, that, that the reason why I write the way I write is to give people an insight into our community, but also um, give travelers themselves an insight into their own community. Because young, young travelers now, some of them wouldn't know as much about the traveler community or the history of travelers or the, what travelers do actually contribute to society. And it's one way of, of, of expressing and the, the, the writing in a, a certain way that people would enjoy the story, but also learn from the experience of, of, of a tra the traveling community and seeing what it's like to be living as a member of the traveling community. And then that creates, um, you know, questions and people want to know what's going on and stuff like that. And what and who inspired or motivated you during your life and also in your career? Sorry, could you repeat? Yeah, 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 of course. So what and who inspired you or motivated you during your life and also in your career? Um, there would be um, an, an awful lot of people down through the years who would inspire me in different ways. I suppose that one, one of the people who would, inspire, would, have, would have inspired me would be traditional traveller storytellers because of they used to carry the stories around and they would tell stories. Some of the stories would be very funny, some would be very sad, but it was just around the whole idea of entertaining people and telling stories. So we had some members, all traditional members of the traveling community. And then I had, I would have had an awful lot of professional actors in my life, like settle actors who would have been, who I would have worked with. I mean, I'd done 12 years on, on a very high profile uh, Irish television program, which was about rural Ireland. And all those actors would have been big, huge names at the time. And they would have inspired me in certain ways. But I always try to look to writers who write uh, about uh, different communities, like um, just said, if there was a story about the, the Nigerian African group in Ireland, the Gypsy group in Ireland, or um, uh, any kind of story that would involve, say, the Aborigines or the Native American Indians, I, I, I get inspired by all that type of stuff. So there would be a, a, a number of different people. Thank you. And what do you think about Roma theater in general? Do you think that Roma gypsy travelers, uh, do they need their own? Uh, is, it, is it necessary to have our, their own or our own institutions? Very much so. Um, uh, the very first time I heard about it uh, in, in 2017, I was very, um, I, I was really excited about the idea. And it was such a, uh, um, it was such an inspiration for me as a, as a traveler actor and writer to meet uh, other young uh, uh, gypsy Rome and traveler English travelers who are also in the entertainment business and to do something like that and then share it with the, with, with the rest of the world um, was very inspirational and I, 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 I think that it's an opportunity for uh, uh, um, a group of people to come together and get funding to encourage other young writers and actors who want to be writers and actors and entertainers. And I think there's many different platforms, as I said earlier on, like just poetry, singing, music and theatre. So we all, we, all we, we, we need that. We need our own platform in order to tell our stories and get them out there for other people to listen to. Thank you. I would also ask, um, what's your future plan or goals now in your life and in your career? Well, I suppose the first thing to do is try and get back on stage with this COVID-19 has, has us all sitting at home. Um, I suppose the um, ambition is to get back on stage and to, um, to do the shows and to meet the audiences again. But I'm also writing a, a film script, which is about a young traveller woman who moves from uh, Ireland to England and her life changes. And, and then she has to come home to face her family because of a tragedy that happened in Ireland. So that's the main project I'm working with at, at the moment. But I suppose my main ambition is to get back on stage and to entertain people and to, to keep telling the stories. 
Thank you. Um, is there anything else that you would add? I think that those are my questions so far for you. That well, I, I, spo I suppose the only, the only thing I would like to say both to um, young gypsies and travellers that uh, there is an opportunity to get into the arts. If you want to get into the arts, don't let little things stop you by, by not getting funding because there's always somebody out there who wants to hear your story. So get writing, get acting, get motivated, get back on stage. Thank you. Thank you also. Thank you very much for the conversation. You're more than welcome. And now you can see the performance called Is it a cultural thing or is it performed and written by Michael Collins. Enjoy the show. Thank you.